Welcome to 13 Cubed. Before we get started, if you aren't yet subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you would do so. Turns out the vast majority of you watching this content are not subscribed, and in order to help the channel grow, well, we need those subs. So again, I would greatly appreciate it. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a neat little utility called RDP Cache Stitcher. Now, if you aren't familiar with RDP Cache, well, stop right here and go watch this 13 cubed episode to learn all about it. In a nutshell, RDP Cache can prove to be a valuable forensic artifact that can allow us to at least partially reconstruct screenshots of an RDP session. This could help us profile threat actor behavior or lead us to discover more about a particular intrusion if the TA was using RDP to move laterally, which happens more often than you might imagine. A few years ago, when I first learned about RDP Cache, I was involved in a year-long investigation in which this artifact played a significant role. One of the people on my team, shout out to Mr. Sean Thomas, discovered that one way we might reconstruct those little 64 by 64 bitmap images was to use PowerPoint. That's right, PowerPoint. Turns out it's quite easy to drag images around and piece them together, not unlike a puzzle, using PowerPoint. So that's exactly what we did to piece together those reconstructed images. Well, RDP Cache Stitcher aims to solve this problem by providing an easy to use interface to reconstruct the images, but it can also provide hints or suggestions as to where a given tile, which would be one of those little bitmap pieces, might fit. You can keep track of multiple reconstructed screens and even export the final products as PNG files, which is extremely helpful. So using an admittedly lame collection of RDP cache taken from one of my lab machines, sorry, no state secrets included here, let's take a look at how RDP cache stitcher works. As we learned in the previously mentioned RDP cache forensics episode, we unfortunately can't go to the location of the RDP cache and view the images directly, at least not initially. They're contained within binary files and have to first be extracted. And to do that, we need to use a utility like BMC tools, which is exactly what we did in that episode. So once again, we're going to be using BMC tools to accomplish that task. You're looking at the GitHub repo for the utility, and all we're going to need to do here is grab the URL for the repo, which we can do by clicking this little copy icon. Now let's go back to WSL2 in Windows Terminal, and we'll issue a git clone and paste in that URL. And within a few seconds, we will have pulled down the contents. Let's go ahead and change into the newly created directory and take a look at what we have. And it's that Python script you see right here that we're going to actually be running, bmc-tools.py. But not just yet. Let's take a look at the next repo. And that repo would be for RDP Cache Stitcher itself. Now we're not going to issue a git clone here. Instead, we're going to download a pre-compiled and packaged release that's ready to execute. We don't want to actually compile this from source. So under releases, I'm going to just click the newest available release, and then I'm going to download the 64-bit Windows version. Note there is a Linux version available just above it. So let's save that to the desktop, and we'll go ahead and go through the motions of extracting it into a folder and making sure the contents look as expected. So let's go down to show more options, 7-zip, extract, and then we should have a nice new folder on our desktop right here. And within it, we have the RDP cache stitcher binary itself. Okay, now we can switch back to Windows Terminal and pick up where we left off, which would be running BMC tools to extract the images. So back in WSL2, before we do anything, let's switch over to a normal command prompt and take a look at the cache. That's going to be located within app data local Microsoft terminal server client cache. And as you can see, for my user, I have three cache.bin files, 0000 through 0002. We're only going to parse the quadruple zero, the first one right here. That will have plenty enough images in it for the purposes of our demo. So how do we do that? Well, back in WSL2, Let's go ahead and run BMC tools without any options to look at the available options. And really there are two primary options, dash S for source and dash D for destination. Seems simple enough, right? So dash S is going to be from WSL2 slash mount slash C, and then the full path to my user directory, and then the cache location that we just looked at. All right, so once we've specified that, now where are we actually going to write it? That will be dash D. 
So let's put it within a directory on my user's desktop. So that will be again, mount C users, Davis RG desktop. And then we'll need to quickly create a directory because I didn't previously create one. So let's minimize this and just create a directory or folder on the desktop. So we'll go new folder and I'll just call it RDP cache. And then we'll just neatly move it over here to the left like so. And we'll go back to the terminal and we should be able to tab complete it now. There we go. So we've specified a source and a destination and that's it. In this case, again, we're only parsing that single file, cache0000.bin, and check that out. 6,600 plus images were successfully exported. That should be enough. All right, so now let's take a look at RDP Cache Stitcher itself. Upon first launch of the software, you'll actually be greeted with a little graphic with arrows pointing to the various controls available to you. Starting in the top left, you can specify the width and the number of screens available to you to reconstruct images and an optional notes window. The top center has an auto place option, which will attempt to guess where tiles might fit best. And then in the top right, you can hide used tiles, duplicates and non square tiles with duplicates being selected by default. Other important controls include left click, which will actually place the tile. Right click will delete or move a tile and middle click will allow you to place the tile where the software guesses it might fit best. And of course, in the very bottom are where the tiles will be located. So let's go ahead and go up to file and new case, and we'll navigate to the desktop and choose the RDP cache directory into which I previously extracted those bitmap files with BMC tools. And after a few seconds, you'll notice it did load all 6,000 plus tiles for us. And when I click okay here, what you'll see in the very bottom are all of those tiles. And you'll notice the scroll bar is quite small. There's a lot of scrolling here and a lot of tiles to choose from. So at this point, we're ready to begin just dragging tiles onto our blank canvas, if you will, to try to reconstruct the images. So how do we do that? Well, you can actually see some of this stuff is already kind of in order. So as I drag things here from the system tray area, you can just kind of pick where you think it might fit best. Kind of reminds me of Minesweeper if you're old enough to have played that, only there's no bombs. <laughs> so anyway, just go ahead and drag the things into the locations in which you think they fit. And it's very easy to drag them around and move them and, you know, just guess what might fit where. In fact, I'll actually speed this up a bit so you can see me going through here and reconstructing some of this. The green shading will show you where a given tile may fit or you can click the auto place button in the top center to have the software automatically choose the tile that would best fit in that location. Or at least it tries. To be honest, I've had mixed results in doing this, though some of my colleagues have found it quite useful in real world investigations. For me though, the major advantage of this software isn't that, it's just the ease at which I can grab tiles from the tile store and drag them onto this grid canvas and reconstruct things. And of course I can create multiple canvases or screens as the software calls it. You can see that I was able to, after just a minute or so, reconstruct part of the Windows taskbar, as well as what looks like part of a command, probably from some documentation that was being viewed within this RDP session. And again, I only spent a couple of minutes in real time doing this. So if you spent, you know, say 30 minutes or so, you could probably come up with a pretty good reconstruction of the screen image. But now that we've reconstructed our little image here, wouldn't it be nice if we could easily export it to a file? Well, of course we can do that. And to do so, all we have to do is go up to the file menu and choose export screen images. We'll browse to the location into which we would like the images to be saved or image in this case. I'll just create a new folder here, just whatever. And then I'll go into that folder and make up some file name that I would like it to be saved as, and then click save and that's it. And at this point we have saved our image to disk, which we can easily now include in a forensic report or whatever. And as you can see, there's the image. It's just that simple. All right, so that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to show you in this episode. I hope that you'll find RDP Cache Stitcher useful. Again, it's a free piece of software. You could, as an alternative, use PowerPoint, which is completely viable, but this to me is even easier. So I hope you'll check it out. As always, thank you for watching this 13 Cubed episode. Thank you for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.